Hi, and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a spe very special watch. For me, actually, it's a very special one uh, because it's a watch of one of my first patrons. Um, I would never have imagined uh, to have people supporting my channel like this. So in return, I asked to, to one of my first patrons if he had a watch that uh, he wanted me to, to restore. So he sent me this beautiful Bulova. Uh, it's actually the first Bulova I, I worked on. And uh, it's a Bulova that uh, his father gave when he was a teenager. And uh, he put it in a safe. He did not wear it since a long time. And you see, it's a bit rough on a, on a crystal, but it's not, the case is in good shape. Um, the watch is working. Uh, the winding is very, very hard, like very stiff to turn the, to turn the crown. We can change the time. Let's, let's see if we can change the date as well. If we can, uh, if the date is jumping at midnight, but yeah, when I turn, it's very, very stiff, like around at the crown. So we'll have to have a look what's, what's going on there. Let's see if the date is changing, if it's jumping. Well, that's not much of a jump. Yeah. It was a very lazy jump. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm very proud, like, and, uh, very fortunate to have people supporting me and yeah that's uh, that's uh, just a, a small thing that i give back like to to restore one of uh, of the watch of my patron hopefully he would be he would be very happy so let's make him proud and uh, make a nice result on his watch okay on a time grapher you see that the amplitude actually is not bad 240 uh, the bit error is 0.5 as well but the rate is way off so he told me that this watch was um, never serviced and he stayed in a safe for a very long time so that's why maybe he didn't lose much amplitude because he was not running. So yeah, he was probably not much wear. Maybe the oil is or grease is a bit dried up, but uh, the amplitude is not that bad to for an old watch. So let's open it and wow, look at it. That's amazing. Yeah, I never saw. That's my first Bulova. Like I was so shocked when I opened it. Like look at the B on the rotor. That's nice and the, the, it's kind of gold gold color. Yeah, it's. Uh, like you have the Omega, you know, with the copper color, and this is like uh, the same. Like uh, you have coating on it, which uh, uh, more like like a gold color, but it looks looks amazing, yeah. Okay, so let's start and let's remove the the rotor first. This beautiful rotor with the B. So you can see there, just removing it like standard standard uh, way of uh, of having a like a rotor on it. Just removing the the case clamp there. So there is two case clamp on each side. You can see the movement. The movement looks very clean. Yeah, a, there is no. I, I don't see much like uh, like sometimes you can see dust or you can see some, some like like fine fine dust. Uh, I don't see anything. But look at this. Yeah, that's this black stuff around. Yeah, that was that's not good. Uh, we will look at it later. The dial is you see like it's in very nice condition. It's a very unique design with these uh, hour markers, like a uh, kind of plastic tube with loom in the middle, but it looks really, really nice. It's, uh, and uh, the mat, the mat of the, the mat black, like it's uh, just cleaning it a bit, but the, the dial is stunning actually, it's in perfect condition. So let's uh, remove the, the dial by releasing the dial feed screw there, very gently. So you see it's a Bulova snorkel. So like, I think it was a diving watch and you see on the case back as well, it was written, it was rated to six, 666 uh, feet. So yeah, it's quite, uh, quite deep for, for a diving watch. Okay, so now I'm disassembling the click for the, for the calendar wheel. Removing the plate there on top with the two screws. And the movement is as well, it's very nice on the, on the other side, you see. Huh? The jewels are popping out like with this uh, ruby color on uh, on the, on the gold is is very nice. Okay, so so far so good. Removing the cannon pinion with a Presto tool. If you have any question on tools as well, because a lot of people ask me which tool I'm using, which oil I'm using. In the description down below, I put some links of uh, some of the tools, oil, and all the stuff that I use to 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 maintain the watch. I cannot put everything, but if you have any questions and if it's not uh, in the description down below, just just put some some uh, question in a comment. Oh, it just jumped there. It was a bit of tension. I always struggle to release because I cannot release the power when you have a, a winding system. You see that now I can release the power, but yeah, I need to look at it to do it a bit better because yeah, I did not like that when it when it jumped a bit. Yeah. Okay, so now I release the power that was in a, in a mainspring, so the the watch should come to a stop. Here we go, it's coming gently to a stop. As always, we are going to remove the, the balance wheel first, just to make sure we don't, we don't damage it. 
It's using a screwdriver there just to lift it slightly. There we go. Perfect. Nicely. All right, that's it is out. Okay, so the balance the balance is out. We can remove now the pallet for cock or more the pallet for bridge in this case. Just removing the screw there, doesn't want to come. There you go. So yeah, it's the first time I work on a on a on a Bulova, so we'll see, but so far I don't see much difference compared to, to another Swiss movement. So yeah, you see that you have a central second pinion all by a, a friction spring on the top. Yeah, you can see that sometime on uh, on some of the Zenith or the Omega as well that have uh, this this type of design. So nothing nothing strange so far. Like we the ratchet wheel, which is beautiful. Like the, the color of this ratchet wheel, this um, ratchet wheel, sorry, is uh, so nice. Like the coating on it, and you see they put the same coating as well on the on the main spring barrel assembly underneath. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty nice. Removing the click there. The crown wheel, which is with like two little screws, small smaller screws that you can find on a watch most of the time. There we go. Is out. Okay, so let's see if underneath. Just checking if there is any play there. Rock solid, no play at all. That's good. Let's see underneath if there is anything different compared to to other movement like on. Uh, Train of wheel, no, that's pretty standard. With the center wheel, third, fourth, and like yeah, in a, you know that's uh, that's pretty standard, but it's, uh, looking good. And like I said, like even on the on the jewel, like I see like the jewels are quite in good shape, like no no dried oil. Just checking the end shake there on a, on the barrel, like look, it's it's okay. You see, it was just slightly moving up and down. You need a bit of play, but not too much. So that's perfect. Just removing the bridge, mainspring bridge on the top there. And underneath we should have only the barrel assembly here. And just releasing the screw like for the setting lever. Perfect. Okay, so now we moved on the dial side for the keyless work. So there is one big screw there. Whoa, what's that? Well, oh, that's some old oil, like it's weird. It looks like, uh, I don't know, it's uh, like strange, strange grease, yeah? So I'm trying to remove as much as I as I could with the Rodico. Obviously, after everything, we go into the cleaning machine, so it will get removed. But yeah, that was yeah a lot of oil or grease, more 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 grease, I think. But yeah, okay. We will remove it. We will clean everything. Removing the yoke spring there. Always the strong spring, but yeah, I was looking. I think the yoke spring was the other way around. Like I don't know why they put the small side. On the on the yoke, and normally it's a big side, long side, which is on the yoke, is uh, is strange. Okay, the last part, the clutch, and the pinion there, cleaning the jewels like with a piece of pegwood, just to make sure like if there is any dried up oil or grease. But we saw the movement is quite clean, but there's nothing more to do it, just to make sure it will uh, it will get clean, uh, it will get clean a little bit better, like when you put it in a washing machine. So yeah. Just uh, it's worth an extra effort if you want. Just placing back the balance, just to keep it safe during cleaning. That's the best place to keep it on the. You see there. Just make sure. Here we go. Now it's in place. It's moving. I can secure it with the screw, and you make sure you want to make sure that the balance you see was fully in place, or else when you screw it down, you will crunch the the stem there. Okay, oh, again, <laughs> there is a main spring assembly with written on it, do not open. Okay, I open it. Let's see what you find inside. Okay, so I remember that's automatic. So sometimes on automatic, like you have different grease. So and uh, let's see how it looks inside the main spring barrel assembly that I should not open, but I did open. Okay, not bad actually, not too bad. Just remove. The barrel arbor, oh, it just jumped there. It was a bit uh, greasy. Did not go that far. Did not go very far. Yeah, here it is. Perfect. Just removing the mainspring there and winding it. Cleaning the pivot from all the wheels. Just to again try to lose any um, lose any uh, dry oil or grease. Do the same on the bridges there. It will make the cleaning a little bit more efficient. 
Okay, and we have one more thing to disassemble. It's uh, the subassembly, which is for the winding system. So I remove the three screws there, and underneath we should have a few wheels. There is one screw that moved that's here. And just another one. Ah, he was hiding under the plate here. Okay, now just going to remove this plate and we should have the wheels underneath. Okay, some, some stay attached at some time sign of, uh, yeah, you see it's a bit dried up oil or grease there, so oiling the, holding the wheel. Big one, and this is two wheels there, which were on sp on a spring, you see. Okay, that's kind of like a reversing wheel. That's a bit different. I never saw that before, but yeah, I understand like how it works. Like you have two wheels on top of each other, like a bit like on a clutch and uh, and uh, and a winding pinion. Okay, here we go. You see that in two parts. So that's it. We disassemble them to make sure they get clean very well, and we put them back together and uh, oil everything properly. Okay. That's done for the cleaning the jewel as well of this bridge. And now we're going to put all the parts in a, in a cleaning machine in these uh, baskets. Make sure they stay safe and don't, don't move around or go anywhere during cleaning. So that's quite a lot of parts actually because with the automatic system, like he had quite a few parts. The calendar is pretty simple on this one. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an extra few parts compared to a standard, a standard watch. Okay, and now let's go to the cleaning machine. Okay, so as always, I would like to, to thank my patrons. I would have never imagined like I would have people supporting my channels, helping through my journey that keep me motivated. And obviously, it's a passion that costs quite a lot of money. So I appreciate people supporting me and uh, motivate me to put better content, invest as well uh, to put better content. So I would like to thank Swami, David, Ted, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Uh, to, for for your support on on Patreon, and obviously this uh, this video is uh, even more special because that's one of the watch on of one of my Patreon. So thank you so much for supporting me, and thank you so much as well for letting me work on your watch. Okay, so now the parts are drying; they are fully clean. There we go. Just uh, finishing, like to 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 cool them, to cool them down a bit after the drying, and we should be able to to have the parts uh, ready to to be reassembled. Okay, we are going to focus on a case. Just remove the bezel there. Bezel actually is quite in good shape as well. It was not much scratch. There is the click underneath for the bezel, and you see as yes, the crystal, the crystal definitely uh, need to be improved. So we are going to remove the crystal. There we go. It has a tension ring. Uh, silver tension ring around. That's all the part for the case. Okay, so for the assembly, we're gonna start with the mainspring barrel. But first, before I put the mainspring, I don't show it on the camera, but what I like to do, I like to put the barrel inside. Just check it's turning freely. There is not too much friction and checking the end shake. When I'm happy with it, I will wind the mainspring and put everything back together. Okay, so now I'm winding the mainspring. That's automatic mainspring, so you see at the end, Usually it's a bit different than a, than a non-automatic mainspring. You just need a little, a little help there to go inside inside the winder. Just, there we go, just push it underneath. So there is a like kind of a little tongue underneath there. There we go, that's it. That's in and I can finish to wind it. I just unwind it to let it, to let it loose and I should, should be able to remove the handle. We go just gently removing the handle there. Perfect. And that's it. So the spring is wine. Putting grease on the, on the bottom and some graphite grease on the wall there because it's an automatic. So you will have the main spring sliding along uh, alongside the wall. So that's why you put the graphite grease there. And we can pop the main spring pop inside the barrel. There we go. Just putting some oil there, some medium viscosity oil before I put the barrel arbor. Remember, we already checked the barrel arbor if it's fitting, it's like no friction, the end shake is good. So we know that now we, we are we are all good. Okay, just lubricating the top and we can close the barrel arbor. Do not open, 
I promise I will not open this one again, probably not. So yeah, but maybe somebody else will open it uh, in a few, few years down the line when you need uh, another service. Okay, so now we are done with the mainspring barrel assembly. We are gonna work and oil the jewels for the balance. So taking the jewel out there. First I clean them and I check they are fully clean. Now I do a treatment in epilam just to make sure the oil will stay nice and center. We, it will make the, the oiling like a, a lot more efficient. So when it's done, just uh, drying the stone a little bit, just to make sure like we remove any uh, excess of epilam. And when it's done, we are going to drop of oil, some 8010, uh, 9010, sorry, right in the middle. So a little drop of oil, so that's very tricky. When it's done, I can put the chaton back on the top there. There we go. And this will go back to this place, right in the center where we have the, the staff, the balance staff there. There we go. Closing the spring there. See, I closed one arm and now I have the second one using thin tweezers there. That's it, it's in position. Do the same operation on the other side. Just remove the spring. And when I do the epilam on the other side, I always do the epilam as well for the pallet fork and the, and the escape wheel. Because this will be oil later on, so like this is done. I'm, I have done epilam on all the parts, just cleaning the pivot point there for the wheels and the, and the pallet fork. Putting a drop of oil there in the middle of the stone, like we did on the other side. So we can put it back in place. Just closing the spring. So that's it. We know that now we have the balance, which is uh, which is oil, and we can carry on with the rest of the assembly. So first, putting some drop of oil there. We're gonna put the main spring and the screw, uh, the setting lever screw later on. There we go. Putting the bridge on the top there. You don't see much of a difference between uh, before and after cleaning on this watch because, like I said, the movement was quite clean. But sometimes, like 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 the cleaning, like with dry, especially in the jewels, like you don't see it on the camera. You, you don't see it. Uh, you don't see it. But if you put it under the microscope, you can see some like tiny drop of uh, dried up oil or grease. So that's why it's very important. Even if the watch looks quite clean, it's very important to 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 clean it in a, in a proper machine. And after you saw me, like I put uh, the parts, we are going to oil as well all the critical points. The oiling as well is very important because in a parts, your enemy is friction because you will have the strength if you want from the mainspring that will be transferred to the balance wheel and all the cinematic that you have, all the interaction like which are between the parts, you want to have as friction as possible for the watch to be the most efficient. Uh, so yeah, that's why you oil, grease, like all the points which are critical if you want. So now I put uh, the bridge and you will not believe, but I just drop it and immediately it was in place. Like normally you have to move like wheels around, but like all the wheels, they fell straight down in the, in the, in the pivot points. That's very rare. And often it's, uh, it's quite a synonym of, uh, of, a, of a good movement. Like uh, you have like everything falling into place straight away. Uh, that's uh, a very good indication that uh, the movement is, is of a good quality. Yeah? So, okay, putting the click now, I put the spring, putting the click. Spring down the click there. This beautiful ratchet wheel, like very nice color, like it's probably one of the best color I saw on a, on, a, on a ratchet wheel. Maybe it was a longin movement that I did like not a long time ago that was as well very nice, but this one, I, I like it a lot. Okay, the crown wheel, you see, so you have this ring where that you need to lubricate around and is this little shoulder where we'll have this part coming on the top there and the ring will turn around. So you need to be nicely lubricated as well. These two screws, yeah, and you can see there everything is working. Perfect. We move on the dial side. We're going to assemble the keyless work. 
putting some grease on this part. I see a lot of friction there. There we go, just falling into place, putting the clutch, the winding stem there. Oh, I really don't like normally like uh, setting levers that need to be screwed. Là. But this one is nice because you have a, like a long shoulder, so you make it easier to keep it in place while you are screwing on the other side. It's something as well is very difficult to put on a camera. Um, but yeah, this one was not bad actually design. I, I really liked it. Um, so yeah, so the keyless work here, that's uh, part of the watch that uh, will be used actually is to set time or to wind the watch depending. So it's a brain if you want like it, uh, say what you want to do when you pull on the stem, that's what actuate if you want the movement. So it's very important. So if you like the video, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel because I saw that there is a lot of people watching my video, actually more than 60% of the people watching my video, they don't subscribe to my channel. So please click on the like button, subscribe and on the bell icon, you will get notified. I put a video once a week and as well that we keep be motivated if we increase uh, the number of my subscribers. So thanks in advance. Okay, putting the cannon pinion now, friction mounted. So oh, there we go, use a bit of strength there. We are going to oil all the pivot point before I put the minute wheel because the minute wheel will cover, you see, it's covering like one joule. So I will not be able to oil it after. So that's why I did the oiling of all the joules. And the last part there on the top, we have the setting lever spring, which come with this uh, big screw there. That's nice to, to have like a easy screw to, to put on. Putting some grease, checking. Yeah, perfect. We we'll see we clean the excess grease with a bit of Rodico, as always. There we go. Because we don't want to do it when we find the watch with a lot of grease at this point. Now it will be a, a lot cleaner. Okay, putting the pallet fork. With the pallet fork bridge, bridge on the top. And we should be coming close to the moment of truth if the, the watch will uh, start again. Just finding the, the place where we have the pivot point on top and bottom, which are aligned. See, I'm moving it around. Oh, it just dropped there. That's it, it's in position. So we just grab a screw quickly, keeping the pressure on it. There you go. And now just screw it in place. Perfect. Putting a bit of a wind, and the winding there is much smoother already than before. So we see at the end if it's, uh, if it's smoother. And yeah, it's clicking. So that's good. The power is coming, coming to the pallet fork. That's a good news. And now we're going to put the balance. Just rotating slightly, just dropping it in place, trying to align everything. Oh, yes. It's starting. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Started. And sometimes it's a bit slow at the beginning because you have put the oil and you can see there when I'm winding the watch fully, it's beating quite strongly. So, yeah, nice. That's a nice beating movement. Oiling everything on the other side as well. All the jewels there, perfect. So we can move on to the next step. We are going to put this uh, wheel on the top that drives the, the second pinion. It's just press fit there, so I use my uh, my tool normally for, for hand setting, just to press it in place. I'm putting this long pinion, just I put a bit of lubrication before on a, on a, on a pinion. And we have this spring there, which is a, a friction spring just to make a bit of friction in a, in a second pinion to make sure that the second end stays smooth when it's beating, it doesn't jump around, it stays it stay as smooth as possible. As it is holding the, the second end just a tiny bit. There we go, now it's in position. Okay, so the next step will be the automatic uh, assembly. So you remember these two wheels like, I mean, oh, we assemble them together, so I hold, I hold them. Putting one back, putting the second back that I assemble as well. There we go. And now we have these two bigger wheels that come in place. Perfect. And we'll have this plate on the top. See, you have two jewels there. The jewels for the two big wheels. And obviously, the, the smaller wheels, they, they don't have a jewel. Okay, just gently moving around until you, until you fall in position. As the same, it's like the train of wheel. You, you want to be very gentle. 
and you see there just making stuff move around until yeah he fall he fall, fall in position not yet there but sometimes you need to be very patient and when it's done just securing it with a screw three little screws on this uh, on this assembly there so that's the last one perfect as we on a train of wheel oiling all the jewels like uh, on uh, both sides very important as well if you want to have uh, a mechanism which is efficient as well for for the winding and when it's done we can place it back on the on the on the main on the main assembly just press it in place and you see when it's turning yeah everything is connected the wheels are all turning perfect so now i can put these two long screws that screw is very dangerous just above the balance wheel I, <laughs> that was a tense moment to put this screw but yeah it was long it's a long screw so it's easier to handle there we go that's it okay so now we move on the other side the calendar side again and we are gonna finish the rest of the assembly so First, for the calendar, for the calendar mechanism, we have this wheel there, which is connected to the hour wheel that we just put. Putting the date disc and putting the calendar plate on the top. Just make sure again everything aligned correctly. This plate as well is what will keep the 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 disc in place, the date disc in place, and we keep it in place with these two screws. Okay, we have this day jumper, which is very different. Like it's just like a kind of uh, a sliding part, like in rails. Like uh, that's nice actually. I like it. And we have this screw, uh, this uh, spring. Sorry, I come and keep tension on it. Perfect. Just putting a bit of oil there, a bit of grease on the on the extremity of this jumper, just to make sure the jump is smooth. Nice, and let's see if the day is jumping. Yes, perfect. You see the wheel like turning, like actually it's, it's funny, like this mechanism, the wheel is turning anti-clockwise on most mechanism, like the wheel is turning clockwise, the dead disc is, is turning clockwise. And you see there, look, it's coming in pressure. And yeah, the jump is nice now. Much nicer than when we got the watch. Like the jump uh, was very weak when you changing, it was changing the date. Now we have a, a nice jump. So we put back this beautiful dial, securing it by uh, screwing the dial fist screw. And let's check, let's change the date. Let's check the jump. Yes, nicer jump, yeah. Okay. Now when we the date change, it means it's midnight. So we're gonna put the hour, hour hand aligned to midnight. So just very important. And actually it's not easy to align this hand because they are very, very uh, large. So yeah. It's a bit trickier than when you have thin hands. So that's it, I press it in place. Again, we are gonna make it come to midnight. Yes, nice jump. And we're gonna line now the minute hand. Same way, we're gonna pull it, trying to align it to midnight as close as possible. And my goal is always to, to have the time changing between minus, minus, plus or minus 10 minutes. Uh, around midnight so let's see if we manage to get this result there okay it's coming back wow just three minutes before midnight that's perfect i uh that's perfect and the last hand which is the second hand just press it in place doesn't matter really where you put it where you align okay so now you move on uh, on the case you remember we disassembled the case it came as well with a bracelet it was not original bracelet now it's cleaning in a uh, ultrasonic uh, just to remove any uh, any dirt. It was not that dirty, but I always do a ultrasonic cleaning. And one step that was important actually is like we need to do something about the crystal. So I decided to polish it on my polishing machine. That's actually the last stage. I did a, a first stage where I remove all the rough uh, like scratches and that to have a nice finish on a crystal. And here is a finished result on a crystal. You see now I'm installing back the bezel. The crystal is much better, and wait to see it when you when you wait, wait when you see it on the on the watch. Uh, it's uh, it's much nicer. So I'm putting back the bezel there. Let's see if it's uh, 
clicking nicely as the sound is nice of the of the bezel it's always something very uh, very important oh yeah that's good i like it very nice to handle as well and here we go now we put the case with uh, the polish crystal oh that, that makes such a difference on this watch the dial is so nice and so unique with these hour markers so yeah that's amazing okay put back the winding stem there just turn the movement around placing this uh, spacer ring around just to make sure the movement stay nice and center and doesn't move around in the watch finish to insert the winding stem there and now we can put back the case clamp so two case clamps that come underneath and that will lift up the if you want in this direction we lift up the 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 mechanism when you when you screw when you screw them there we go perfect putting a bit of oil we're on a on a pivot point for the rotor there just beautiful you so beautiful this rotor and actually the rotor as well it was not much play just lifting it up there that I can put the fork, dropping it down. Yeah, here we go. This fork actually is what's holding the, the rotor in place. So, uh, perfect. Getting a new O-ring there, just to make sure the, the, the watch is uh, nice and, and watertight, as much as even if it's a vintage watch. It's always nice to, to put new O-ring and new gaskets. That's it. I always use put some grease, make it easier to put in place and that will more more efficient for water tightness. And we can put back the case back. Nice, nice case back there. And that's it. We put it on a time gopher and you see the amplitude is around 250, 260. So we get it a bit higher. Uh, not a lot higher actually because the movement was quite clean. The bit error it was all quite good and just regulate the watch around yeah around zero plus plus four minus two like it's oscillating around there so yeah the, the watch is quite accurate the amplitude is uh, is quite good so i'm pretty pleased with the result and obviously it's it's looking much nicer than when it came in especially with the crystal which is uh, which is repolished you see that it's getting a bit uh, it's getting a bit of amplitude um so yeah nice result and here is a watch on my wrist you see much nicer very nice i did not touch anything about the case it was already looking very nice so and i wanted to keep it as original as possible so hope you like the video hope my patron will be proud of this uh, of the new watch will wear it and enjoy it because it's a very very nice watch so thanks a lot for watching and i see you in my next episode bye bye Thank you.